This video was brought to you by Bluestacks, which is a free Android emulator that you can use to play any Android Google Play game that is usually on your phone, instead on your computer. This will allow you to go and get better graphics and overall a much smoother time playing the games that you like on your computer instead of your mobile device. You can play Acid Lane on it, and this is what I use to go and record my videos. So if you want to give it a try, it is a free, complete download. And if you are downloading it, you are supporting me too. So take a look. It's in the description. Bye. Hey guys, I'm Ander or FBA Open Up on the Lexington server. And since the War Spite Retrofit item rerun has just recently come to an end, I thought it'd be a great time to go and go over her equipment. So let's get started. So War Spite Retrofit aka the Queen's Dog, aka the Royal Corgi, aka Belly Dura Despacito, is, as you may know, one of the best battleships in the entire game due to her insanely good stats and amazing consistency in dishing out massive amounts of damage. Being yet another Rainbow Rarity SR ship, the only other being of course Sandy Retrofit, she is unsurprisingly very good. Amazing firepower combined with her extremely high luck and accuracy make her a honestly the most consistent DPS in the entire game. If you're ever in doubt and don't trust any of your other battleships to go and proc their barrages, I'm looking at you Nagato, you can always rely on Warspite to get the job done. Her first skill, Belly Dura Despicio, also known as Belly Dura Despacito, also known as Divine Marksman, is what she is known for and is also what makes her an absolute monster in PvP. So Warspite will fire a guaranteed barrage 10 seconds into the start of battle, and then every 15 seconds afterwards. This barrage shoots out two AP shells that target the farthest enemy from Warspite, and it also has a 100% guaranteed critical hit barrage. So along with an increased chance for your other Royal Navy ships to go and target the enemy ship hit, which is basically what this gigantic paragraph is saying. So, these two shells from this Divine Marksman barrage deal massive damage to anything it touches. We're talking about damage in the thousands for each shell. Along with this, the first shot in each battle from this barrage will gain an additional 130% extra damage boost, meaning that she will be able to deal more than double the damage on her first barrage, which is going to be that 10 second into the start of battle one. So this is why she is so incredibly deadly in PvP. Since your opponent's backline is stationary, that means that Warspite Retrofit will be able to get a guaranteed hit onto a certain enemy that you want to target, and will either deal a one-shot blow and just completely annihilate them, or deal a massive amount of damage to that ship. Now Warspite also gets an additional skill, the Royal Navy Legend, that gives her additional stat boosts on top of her already fantastic stats. She gets a reduced dispersion of her main gun, meaning that her salvos will be much more precise and land almost exactly where you aim them. And she also gets a very nice 15% firepower boost, along with an extra 15% hit rate increase against destroyers. From this, you can see why Warspite Retrofit is used everywhere, especially for her high level content. Her extremely good consistency in dealing very high DPS makes her a top pick for any fleet. In addition, she also does not require the middle position in the backline, since her salvo is really her barrage is not really affected by position, meaning she has insanely good versatility and can be used anywhere. If you haven't already, finish up that Warspite retrofit event, grab yourself that Warspite sword so then you can modernize her, and get yourself your very own Warspite retrofit. Moving on to Warspite's general gear loadout, we start off with the main gun. Now since Warspite's Barrage is again time-based and is not based off of when she fires a salvo, she does not have to worry about equipping a faster firing gun and will optimally want a higher DPS gun with a slower fire rate instead. The very best in slot for her would be none other than the trusty purple triple 406mm main gun. Now it's better than all the other gold guns for some reason, and it's got everything a good gun would want. It's high explosive high damage, great accuracy, and a slightly slower but still quite reasonable reload time. The cherry on top is of course that it is purple, so if you want to go and upgrade it to plus 10, which you should, it is actually going to cost a lot less than your gold guns, making it even better. You can find the triple 406mm in 
6-2, 6-3, and an Eagle Union purple and gold boxes. There really is no excuse in not using this gun since there really is no downside, but if you do want another solid option, the triple 381 millimeter, which is not this one, it is the other one that I have on Richelieu right now, it is basically identical to the triple 406 millimeter, except the prototype triple 381 millimeter trades off a bit of damage per salvo for that additional 20 extra firepower. So in most cases, these two guns function almost exactly the same, except the triple 406 millimeter is much cheaper to upgrade and is also much easier to much easier to obtain. So if you are tired and looking at all your triple 406s on your battleships, then might as well just put a triple 381 millimeter. For AP options for World 13, you would of course want the prototype triple 410 millimeter. And if you have it, the PR2 Rainbow Gun, also known as the Twin 457 millimeter, which I am nowhere near finishing because I don't have it. Uh, yeah, that that one's really good, of course. So use that if you have it. Now moving on to Warspite's auxiliary guns, Warspite Retrofit can equip light cruiser guns, so she will follow the standard light cruiser gun recommendations for a battleship's aux guns. The best in slot would be the AP prototype triple 152mm, also known as the Neptune gun, as it has AP ammo that travels faster, and it has a really low reload, so it's super good. This gun does come in limited quantities though, and will be much better used as a light cruiser main gun as seen by how I have it on Swiftsure right now, but if you do have a couple extra lying around, then you can definitely use it as a battleship aux gun. Next up is going to be the HE options, which is the, going to be the triple 155mm mounted gun, and the prototype triple 152mm. They are both very solid options that are a bit worse than the AP gun that I mentioned before, but they are still very very good nonetheless. This one, the triple 155, will give you a nice 45 extra firepower, while the triple 152 will give you a 30 firepower and 15 anti-air. They are both very good, but they are also a little bit worse than the AP gun, since they do have high explosive ammo, which travels slower, as well as a slightly longer reload. They are a bit worse, but not by much, so if you have them, definitely make sure that you're using them too. The purple budget friendly options if you don't have those gold guns is going to be none other than the twin 150mm which is always a great option. It has great accuracy, damage, fire rate, and really you just can't go wrong with it. You can obtain this from iron blood purple and gold boxes stage 4-2 and stage 9-3. Now you can also use the twin 152mm which roughly performs the same as the twin 150mm that I just mentioned right here. and. This one is obtained from Royal Navy Purple and Gold Boxes, Stage 4-3 and Stage 10-1. Now for the anti-air gun slot, for battleships you would just want an anti-air gun that gives additional accuracy. The best would then be the twin 40mm Beaufort Stag, as it has a very valuable 10 extra accuracy from this. And in that regard, the next best is going to be the twin Beaufort Hazemeyer, that gives 5 extra accuracy, but it is still better than nothing. If you don't have them, you can always go with your very trustworthy Golden Roomba, also known as the Twin 113mm, or really just any other gold AA gun and you'll be fine. You can get this gold Roomba from 7-2, 11-4, and gold or rainbow Royal Navy tech boxes. If you have none of these guns, the best purples are going to be the purple Roomba and the 127mm mounted AA gun. You can get the purple Roomba from 7.2 and 11.4, and the 127mm mounted gun from 4.4, 12.4, and purple slash gold Sakura Empire tech boxes. Finally, for Warspite's aux gears, I would either run two top options. The first top option being, of course, the white and black shell, which is pretty standard. They both give a very significant firepower boost. The white shell, giving 55 extra firepower, as seen right here along with 15 extra accuracy, and that main gun crit damage increased by 25%. The black shell on the other hand gives 70 firepower, and a main gun crit rate increase by 8%. Together, they drastically increase Warspite's damage output, and are always going to be solid options for any battleship. You can purchase either of these for 800 core data each in the core data shop. The second top option is either running a black or white core data shell in the first slot, 
and a high standard fire control radar in the second slot. The reason why I am actually trading out one of these shells for a high standard fire control radar, which you can obtain from either the original Fallen Wings event, which passed ages ago, or from PR3 research, is because the high standard fire control radar has a really nice ability that decreases the loading time of the first main gun volley by 15%. Now, for ships that are running the 4406mm, which is known to have a higher regular damage output, but the one downside is its slightly slower reload, the high standard fire control radar will completely negate that one downside of that gun by increasing that loading time of the first main gun volley. This will allow your war spite to go and shoot a bit faster and just have a bit of a smoother experience. So if you value a little bit of a timing increase, either for Helena's debuff or something like that, then run the high standard fire control radar. If not, just stick with the regular firepower boosts, those will serve you very well. Some other recommendations include, of course, the fire control radar, which is basically a worse version of the high standard fire control radar, and the poor man's white shell, which is a worse version of the Cordata white shell. And for those that are wondering about the SG radar, I actually would not recommend using the SG radar on Warspite, because the extra accuracy that it provides is, first of all, worse than the high standard fire control radar, and it is also completely useless for Warspite because Warspite has a super super good accuracy already. With that gear guide finished, let's get into the battle showcase. So since Warspite shines in PvP, I'll be showing her off in some exercises. Let's go ahead straight into it. For this PvP showcase, I'll just be fighting whoever has the highest power, who in this case is going to be Tatsuya777, and I'll be using a very boring IGN fleet with Warspite in the back right here, Nagato as flagship, Kiryu Retro in the other corner, and of course the Torpedo Vanguard meme fleet. Let's get started. <laughs> so, the battle has started and it looks like my torpedo meme fleet has missed all of the opponent's vanguards, but it is hitting that Jean Bart like no tomorrow. So Warspite's Divine Marksman just procced, and goodbye Jean Bart. That is basically Divine Marksman in a nutshell, that was 9000 damage on the Jean Bart, and combined with my torpedo meme fleet, it has completely annihilated Jean Bart in the first couple seconds. Now, let's see, Divine Marksman is going to annihilate the Nagato as well, and all that's left is now the, of course, NT with her lucky E. Now, I'm pretty sure just one torpedo meme fleet will just bop her, along with a Nagato barrage, but that is battle number one. And if everything goes to plan, Warspite probably gets MVP, as you can see right here, mostly because of that Divine Marksman that just deals crazy amounts of damage. Super good. Now next up, okay, I think I can do a little better than that. Let's get a strong opponent. Get a strong opponent. Okay, uh, this person looks a little bit better. Detalion. He's got all married people, and let's go and see how this one goes. The battle has started once again, and it looks like my torpedo meme fleet has done a little bit of a number on the opponent's vanguard. And let's see that war spike proc. Let's go right now. You. Ooh, massive damage. Ten thousand onto the NT. She is almost dead, but not quite. Looks like. If Warspite can hit that NT a little bit more, she has died before she procs her lucky E, which is super super good. Divine Marksman once again is actually going to miss because Monarch has already died, and all that's left is the opponent's Amagi, who will die very very soon. Torpedo Meme Fleet? Maybe? Okay. And I th Warspite will be able to finish the job no problem at all. And predictions guys, who's going to be MVP this time? Let's find out. It's going to be Warspite once again, mostly because she just completely annihilated that Enterprise with 10,000 damage in the first 10 seconds. Next up on the chopping block is going to be... Uh, let's go with o Ono Lucar. Okay, this guy is going to get destroyed. Um, see you there. The battle has commenced once again, and it looks like everybody's torpedoes completely missed. Aside from Yukikaze's torpedoes actually being able to hit all three of the backlines right here, Divine Marksman is Prince of Wales actually took that surprisingly well. Wow, that's actually really surprising. Nagato's over here, not gonna proc her barrage because yeah, looks like Prince of Wales gets finished off, and all that's left is going to be that Prince Oigen and that NT. NT just for some reason decides to go and make everything miss because that's NT. Looks like. 
Rin Zoygin's gonna hang in there for a little bit longer, and she's not there anymore. All that's left is just gonna be a complete manslaughter against that NT, and that is battle number three. This time, I'm pretty sure one of the vanguards took it. Never mind, worse if I took it still. Don't be confined by these so-called limits, it is indeed possible to be unsinkable. Hmm. Now I know this guy has a stronger main fleet, but this guy has an Admiral Hipper profile pick. So I'm just gonna go and quickly um, annihilate him. Getting into battle, let's go. You. Okay. Pretty standard stuff, Saratoga's gonna get one shot once Warsight procs. Goodbye, Saratoga. It was nice knowing you. Uh, so far, looks like their vanguards are actually surviving pretty well. Um, not anymore. They're all dead. And moving on, that was a clean sweep, as predicted. I mean, it moves so fast, Warspite's probably not going to get an MVP this time, but... Let's go. Yukikaze actually got it this time. To wrap things up, I'll just do one more battle real quick against... And Andre Yonix. Yeah, that guy. Uh, let's start it. Battle has started. And this time, their vanguards are surviving quite well. It's been 10 seconds. Saratoga, will you survive this time? She does. Wow. And it looks like their Warspite did a number on my Hear You Retrofit. So this is, this is really the reason why Warspite just kind of is always in PvP. She just does a lot of damage. Divine Marksman will proc once again, and haha, my Hiryu has final counter, so she will not die, and instead their worst bite will die. Let's quickly keep on going, Laffy is still up on their team, not anymore. Divine Marksman will probably close this out, never mind it missed because why not, and that's the last battle. Very very cool. And worst bite got MVP again by a very nice margin. With that battle showcase finished, that will conclude my gear guide for Warspite Retrofit. As always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Don't forget to press that notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you're interested, you can always join my Discord server if you need any advice or just want a place to relax. That'll be all for this video, so I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!